Hi, Linear Algebra students. Yet again, another exercise for you. You should, again, as usual, write, please attempt it by yourself. You have the tools to, uh, to solve this exercise, uh, especially with the hint that I gave to you uh, on your lecture notes, uh, which I will describe. Uh, but as usual, again, like the point of these YouTube videos is that if you try this exercise, but are not getting anywhere for some reason, then you can follow some of the steps, uh, try again, or just watch the entire video if you're totally lost and you need a, a second shot at it. So, uh, find the matrix of a linear transformation from R2 to R2 uh, that first rotates vector, a vector, so I should, I should put this in singular actually, rotates a vector, about the origin by pi over three radians counterclockwise, and then projects the resulting vector onto the x2 axis, okay? So this linear transformation does two things sequentially, okay? So let's underline these two things. Um, so rotates a vector about the origin by pi over three counterclockwise. This is like the trigonometric definition, so I'm not going to underline this. And then after that, uh, projects, yeah, projects the resulting vector onto the x2 axis. Okay. So the hint to solve this problem is to really follow what happens to E1 and what happens to E2 as they undergo the full transformation. So I'm gonna do three sketches actually. Mm, yeah, perfect. So we have like X1, X2. And here I'm gonna give myself a little bit more space actually because um, E2 is going to get rotated in the second quadrant. So because of that, um, I will actually write like uh, X1, X2 like this. Or, oh, I have an even better idea. Yeah, this first sketch will just be uh, in the first quadrant. I'm just going to draw uh, E1, E2. Then I'm going to write the result after the first transformation which is going to look like this. And then the second transformation is uh, actually going to be very small. Okay, so uh, this is x1, this is x2. x1, x2. And finally, we have here x1 and x2. Okay. Now, as usual, this is the vector e1. Okay. So what's going on to the vector E1? The first thing we do is we rotate it about the origin uh, by pi over 3 radians. So in other words, uh, the vector E1 becomes something like this. Okay. It has a length of 1, okay. uh, but it makes an angle like this of pi over 3. Okay. And what's great about this is that we can actually find, so um, yeah, I'll go here in blue actually. What we need to do is actually to find its, its x coordinate and its y coordinate. So its x coordinate will be the cosine of that pi over 3. And the y coordinate, so right here, will be the sine of pi over 3. I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to write it here, and you'll see why very soon. OK. Then the transformation projects the resulting vector onto the x2 axis. Uh, projection means that basically you imagine some kind of bulldozer, and you crush the vector. It keeps the same height, OK, but it falls uh, onto the x2 axis. So after the transformation, the vector will look like this. Okay, so I'm, I'm not going to write E1 here. It's not E1 anymore. And this is certainly not E2. Uh, because look, 
this uh, has a height of uh, sine of pi over 3. Right? That's what the projection means. So as a result, we have that T of E1 is equal to uh, sine of pi over 3. Now, sine of pi over 3, I'm expecting you to know your trigonometry. It turns out to be square root of 3 over 2. All right, so we have that. Oh, wait, uh, square root of 3 over 2, what am I saying? It's sine of pi over 3 multiplied by the vector e2. Okay? And this means that what we have is uh, 0 and square root of 3 over 2. That's it. That's what the vector t of e1 is. Let's now follow what's happening to the vector e2. Okay, so this is e2. Again, we first rotate it about the origin by pi over 3. Now, this is a little bit more tricky, okay, because uh, it's going to produce first a vector like that, okay? Again, the length of the vector is going to be 1. And um, the angle of pi over 3, counterclockwise, is now going to start from the x2 axis, okay? And this means that the angle we have over here is pi over 6. So the angle that's like right in between here, this is going to be pi over 6. And then what you need to do is to find its components by whatever means necessary. Okay? So the x component of uh, this vector, okay? So this in red will be, as I can see, the neg negative, the cosine of pi over 6. So Cosine of pi over 6 will be its length. But you're putting the negative sign because you know that the vector is pointing in the negative x1 direction. And here, we have the sine of pi over 6. Okay? So this is step 1. Step 2 is you're projecting the resulting vector onto the x2 axis. So remember, same as with uh, E1, you take a bulldozer and you crush this on the x2 axis. You make it keep its height, okay? So this will be the resulting vector. And the height, as you can see, will be sine of pi over 6. And this means that t of e2 will be the sine of pi over 6 multiplied by e2. And again, we have here 0. And sine of pi over 6, you should know that this is a half. So we have our final answer. Right? The standard matrix which, again, is going to be the matrix formed of T of E1. T of E1 will be its first column, and T of E2 will be its second column. Will be given by uh, 0, root 3 over 2, and 0, 1 half. And that's it. This is the answer. We're going to learn another way in the second chapter, chapter 2, first section of the chapter, 2.1. We will learn actually how to, uh, how to get the matrix from the two individual transformations. So we can certainly do it like this, like following from beginning to end what's happening to the vectors E1 and E2. But we, uh, there's actually another way to do it just by using the two simpler transformation. So uh, as, we, uh, as we follow the 2.1 section, 
I'm, I'm going to update you on this. So see you there. See you in the next video.